The man known to history as Moritala Ramat Mohammed was born on Tuesday, November 8, 1938, to the family of Riskua Mohammed in Kurawa quarters of the ancient city of Kanu. He was the second child of eight children. Moritala Mohammed was a controversial but revered Nigerian head of state who served for only 200 days before his assassination but left indelible mark in the hearts of the Nigerian people. In this edition on Hispul Media, we bring to your view 30 amazing facts you probably did not know about General Moritala Ramat Mohammed, former Nigerian head of state. Please come with me. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you are interested in history stories. Thank you. We begin at number 30. After the first military coup happened in Nigeria on January 15, 1966, Moritala Ramat Mohammed, who was still in Lagos, mobilized northern soldiers and conducted their own investigation about the coup. He was involved in the torture and interrogation of soldiers who had not been in the barracks during the coup. Number 29. Moritala Mohammed was one of a few officers who arrested Kaduna Nziogu when he finally surrendered to Agui Ronzi after the January 1966 coup in Nigeria. At number 28, the head of state, General Agui Ronsi, had appointed northern officers, including Moritala Mohammed, in critical positions in order to reduce tension and pacify northern officers after Nziogu led coup. But the move turned out to be a critical mistake. Moritala Mohammed, who was promoted to the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, would use his position as Inspector of Signals to plan the counter coup in July. Number 27. Moritala Mohammed was rumored to have called the head of state a fool and threatened to avenge the death of northern officers and politicians killed in the January coup. Despite the new rank he was promoted by Aguironsi, he still could not move on. Number 26. Another interesting thing to note is that Moritala Mohammed's home in Lagos was used as rendezvous to plan the July counter coup. Mohammed would also pick up his co conspirators in his car at an arranged rendezvous and drive them around while planning the coup. At number 25, even before Ojuku called for the breakup of Nigeria, Moritala Mohammed had called for the northern Nigeria to break from the rest of the country after the July counter coup. As the leader of the July coup, Mohammed's intention was to break the northern region out of Nigeria. Hence, the code name for their coup was Operation Araba, a house award which means let's separate. Number 24. After intense debate for over three days and Moritala Mohammed's failure to break up the northern Nigeria from the rest of the country, General Yakubu Gowon became the head of state much to the annoyance of Moritala Mohammed. At number 23, Moritala Mohammed, as the man behind Yakubu Gowon's throne, would frequently show up uninvited to Supreme Military Council meetings, causing a split between him and Gowon. This would persist for a decade until Gowon's ouster and Mohammed's death. At number 22, during the Civil War, Moritala Mohammed was named the General Officer Commanding GOC of the newly established 2nd Division of the Nigerian Army and was taxed with a victim of Juku-led Biafran forces from the Midwest. And at number 21, it may interest you to note that Moritala Mohammed was Ojuku's student at Teshi in Ghana. Ojuku taught Mohammed infantry tactics and military law in the school. At number 20, division from the ground up and dropped the Biafrans out of the Midwest in a ferocious onslaught that earned him the title Monty of the Midwest after British World War II leader Field Marshal Bernard Monty Montgomery. At number 19, in the midst of the enthusiasm, soldiers from Moritala Mohammed's 2nd Division carried out a gruesome and horrific killing of defenseless Igbo villagers in the Midwest known as the Asaba Massacre. At number 18, interestingly, during the massacre in Asaba, Moritala Mohammed saw to it that the mother of Major Kaduna Nziogu was kept safe and was not harmed. And at number 17, it may interest you to know that Moritala Mohammed also oversaw the killing of most Nigerian soldiers in his effort to cross Onicha from Asaba. Many of the soldiers drowned in the river Niger. Others were killed by Biafran attacks. Number 16. 
After his disastrous outing during the civil war, Moritola Mohamed returned to Lagos and took up his previous position as Inspector of Signals and will be promoted to the rank of Condel in April 1968. Number 15. The International Airport was named after him by his successor, General Lushiguno Basinjo, and his portrait also adorned the Nigerian 20 Naira notes. At number 14, Moritela Mohamed was promoted to Brigadier in October 1971 after the end of the war, after completing a staff college course at the Joint Service Staff College in England. He was 33 years old at the time. Number 13. Brigadier Moritela Mohamed was appointed Federal Commissioner for Communications in August 1974, succeeding Joseph Taka, who had resigned due to corruption allegations, and combined it with his military responsibilities, continuing to serve as Inspector of Signals. Number 12. On October 1, 1974, General Yakubu Gowon postponed the return to civilian government in 1976, claiming that the country was not ready and that politicians had learned nothing and forgotten nothing. This angered Moritala Mohamed and would lead ultimately to Gowon's ouster. Number 11. Moritala Mohamed seized power from Yakubu Gowon on July 29, 1975, the same date that he and Gowon seized power from General Agui Ronsi. The coup was bloodless and ushered in the presidency of Moritala Mohamed, who ruled with immediate faith. Number 10. In his inaugural speech on July 38, 1975, Moritala Mohamed invented these phrases, fellow Nigerians, and with immediate effect into the Nigerian political vocabulary. And at number 9, as head of state, Moritala Mohamed tackled corruption effectively. In fact, in my view, he's one of Nigeria's most effective leaders in terms of fighting corruption. After getting rid of Gowon's cronies, he set his sights to the civil service. Moritala Mohamed unleashed a massive onslaught against public sector corruption and inefficiency on a scale that was never seen before in the country. Over 10,000 public officials were summarily dismissed and retired on the grounds of inefficiency and widespread corruption. Number 8. Moritala Mohamed outlined the framework for the return of Nigeria to democratic rule on October 1, 1979, and was the first to plan the relocation of the Federal Capital Territory to Abuja in the center of Nigeria, which was fulfilled in 1991. He also increased the number of states from 12 to 19, with the creation of seven new states, including Anambra, Imbu, Niger, Ogun, Ondo, Oyo, and Plateau on February 3, 1976, 10 days before his assassination. Number 7. Moritala Mohamed was assassinated on February 3, 1976, by disgruntled junior officers, among whom was Bukar Sukar Demka but his death was believed to have been made possible because of some obvious mistakes. At number 6, the bizarre promotion exercise embarked upon by Moritala Mohamed in January 1976 was believed to have caused bad blood and created tension in the army, leading to his assassination. T.Y. Danjuma was promoted Lieutenant General, while Elia Bisala, who senior T.Y. Danjuma, was only promoted to the rank of a Major General a rank that was below Danjuma's position. And as Commissioner of Defense at that time, Bisala was holding an office that was superior to Danjuma's. At number 5, Moritela Mohamed was believed to have failed to take his personal security seriously. After becoming the head of state, he continued to live in his house at number 6 Second Avenue Ekoi in Lagos without relocating to Dodan Barracks and would appear in events unannounced. At number 4, General Moritala Mohamed was assassinated on Friday, February 13, 1976, while heading for work along his usual route on George Street. As his car slowed to a halt in the infamous Lagos traffic outside the Federal Secretariat Ikoi, a group of soldiers, including Lieutenant Colonel Bukar Sukaradimka, Major Rabu, Captain Malaki, and Lieutenant William Seri, rushed to his car and spread the car with bullets, killing the head of state his ADC Lieutenant Akintunde Akinsheiwa, his driver Sergeant Adamu Minchika, and injuring his orderly Staff Sergeant Michael Otuwe. At number 3, he was only about 200 days in office. 
at number two, when Chief Obafumi Awolowo was freed from jail in Calabar prison and flown to Lagos in 1966, it was a young Major Moritala Mohammed who offered to transport him back to Ikene, his hometown. And finally, at number one, Moritala Mohammed met his future wife Hafsat Ajuke, a Yoruba lady, while studying at the School of Dental Hygiene in Lagos as a second lieutenant in 1961. His relative had brought them together. It was love at first sight, and when they met again two years later in Kaduna in 1963, the 24-year-old captain proposed to her and they got married. So, what other interesting fact do you know about Moritala Muhammad that is not included here? Leave your thoughts in the comment section so we can learn from you. For a full story of the assassination of General Moritala Muhammad, please click this video here. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more interesting history stories. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Peace.